Oh, just practicing my dragon dagger. Sorry about that. A lot of you have been asking about a room tour, and we just moved to my new place, so I thought this was the perfect time. Let's do it. So, right underneath my incredible Pearl Jam poster from their Copenhagen show in 2012, thank you Todd McFarlane for the great art, we have the star of the show, which is my beautiful turntable. This is a Pioneer PL518X. I got this on Craigslist, because I always recommend to people, when you want to get into turntables and you want to get into vinyl, definitely go vintage. Craigslist is your best bet. Not everything's going to be totally clean and totally working, but when you find that thing that is working, it's going to be cheaper than a new turntable, hands down. This guy has given me no problems my entire time owning it. Sounds great, looks great, I'm a big fan. Right below it is the SX790, another Pioneer piece. It is a beautiful receiver that I absolutely love. I've, again, had no issues with it, so I can't recommend more going vintage. A couple other cool things over here in my little audio corner. I have my Walkman Sport for my cassettes. Sounds wonderful. I managed to get a Library of Congress cassette player for the blind, which is really cool, and it sounds great. It has a speed adjustment. Really great way to listen to Vaporwave. I also recommend using some kind of carbon fiber brush before you play any record. You basically just take it and you hold it over the record as it spins and it picks up any residual dust. And then make sure that you move it to the middle before taking it off so it doesn't just distribute the dust all over the record. If you want to do a simple wet clean and you don't want to get a huge spin clean operation, a vintage disc washer is a good way to go. This is one of the old ones before they changed it and the brush was not so good quality. I think this is from the 60s. But get one of these, put a little cleaning fluid on it, give it a wipe, you're golden. Always recommend having a pair of tweezers if you have to pull something off the front of your needle. Very careful. Great for taking dust off. You can never be too thorough when cleaning your records. Microfiber cloths. Always take this and I give it a nice quick wipe down before playing just for any excess residue. Too much wiping will cause static, so one quick once over should be good enough. Oh, and this is my Alt-J pick. If you want to do a deeper clean, I do have a spin clean, so... If you want to do a deep wet clean, spin clean is a good affordable option if you don't have the money to buy one of those crazy vacuum clean machines. If you want to come over here, I'll show you my speaker. So this is the weak part of my setup, unfortunately. These are some Dayton Bookshelf speakers. They're entry level. They cost about 50 bucks when I first got them. They sound really nice, but there's definitely room for improvement, and that's actually the next thing I'm going to improve in my setup. I've been looking at all kinds of speakers on Amazon, and I'm starting to think that going vintage might be a smart move on Craigslist, although you have to plug them in and make sure that they work when you get there, which is a little tricky. There are some brand new speakers I'm looking at that are beautiful. A little pricey, but you definitely get what you pay for. I'm going to link those in the description, so if you're interested in getting some new speakers, I highly recommend all the ones I link. So now this channel is all about too many records, and I do have too many records, so I want to show you where they all are hiding around the room. I do have some overflow on the floor and a couple shelves that are just records that I don't know where to put them or I don't have room in my categorized stuff, but I'm going to show you how I set up my records and what I store them in. So right here, this is a bunch of overflow. These are extra records I haven't had a chance to listen to yet, or they don't fit in with the other genres that are alphabetical. I will get around to them very soon. It's not enough time of the day to listen to records all day. I wish there was, but I'm going to get around to them one day. I do have a lifetime. Now let's move right over here. This is my main record shelf. What this is, is completely alphabetized indie rock. It's mostly stuff from 1990 all the way to present day all alphabetized. So this is A going all the way down to Z. The first three shelves are my rap, hip hop, and R&B records, also alphabetized. Final box down there is actually my world music. Again, alphabetized. You have to know how to find your records, and I have so many that if I didn't alphabetize them, I would never find them. It's more to see, come on. Right here, I do have some of my cassettes. This is by no means all of my cassettes. I got one of these Napa cassette holders and they're incredibly hard to find now because cassettes are back and people charge a crazy amount for them. I got it for five bucks on Craigslist, but this is hard to find, but there are affordable options on Amazon for cassette storage. I'm gonna link those for you if you do have some cassettes to put away. I have more, so I'm gonna probably buy those. Over here are more record shelves, obviously. Basically, this is my, well, for the most part, electronic, down-tempo, ambient, modern, classical sections. So alphabetical, A through Z, going all the way down here. Once we get to this section down here though, it's soundtracks. So soundtracks A to Z right here, followed by my vinyl moon records are over here. I keep them separate just because it's hard to categorize a compilation album. 
and I also have my 10 inch records over here. But a whole bunch of mailers in case I have to sell or trade a record. But wait, there's more. Hey, these are my oldies. So we're talking 50s through 80s, all alphabetical. You got all the good stuff, you know, Simon and Garfunkel, Bob Dylan, Led Zeppelin, pretty much everything you need from those eras packed into here. I have some overflow of that as well, so I do need to find more storage somehow for them one day. And up here are my Dragon Balls. We're almost done, but we're saving some of the best for last. Right here, these are my seven inches. I probably need to get better storage for it, but they fit pretty nicely on my DVD case. All my seven inches, not quite as many as my records, but it's growing. Last but not least, we have box sets. These are all of my box sets. My printer sits right here, but I have three full shelves of box set records. I love box sets. They're a little expensive, but I'm a sucker for the presentation. They have nice inserts, nice sturdy boxes. I'm a huge fan, as you can see. I might have too many. So those are the last of the records that I display, but as you know, I have a bit of a problem. And check this out. I have some extras to figure out what to do with. Nothing is impossible! So that's my room setup. And the last thing I want to tell you about is what I store my records in. You saw them and you probably know them, but if you don't, I have to say the Ikea line is king. It used to be called the Expedit, but they retired that line and made it the Kallax, which is virtually the same thing. This is the primary way that record collectors store their records, and honestly, I can think of very few options that are better. They look clean, they fit records absolutely perfectly, and they're relatively affordable too. So I'm gonna link you in the description where you can find ways to get Kallaxes for yourself. You can also go to Ikea site. And if you have any other storage options that I might not know about, I'd definitely like to hear about them. So there you go. That is my setup. That is my room tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, if you want me to do a follow-up video with any kinds of new information, please let me know. As I said, I'm gonna link in the description all the stuff that I talked about. If you wanna buy it and help set up your new record collection, this is a great way to do it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, please subscribe, and we'll see you with more videos every week.